Hey what's up guys welcome to your 14th Android tutorial and what we're going to do in this tutorial is work within our splash activity basically we want the splash activity to sleep for five seconds and then open up a new activity uh, basically our starting point activity and we're going to accomplish this by a, using a thread now I want to show you guys threads because it's super important especially for game development and what threads allow you to do is do multiple things pretty much at the same time instead of waiting for something to get done and then doing something else. So I'm just going to show you the basic framework of a thread and use the thread to execute what we want to do for our splash activity. To set up a thread it's just basically like every other variable we've set up we define what type it is and it's going to be of the type thread. And we're going to call this thread timer because basically it's going to be timer that counts for five seconds and then starts an activity. Now how we're going to set this thread up is basically create a new thread. So we're going to say new thread. I know this is kind of a, you guys are probably like, what's this new thing all about? Just don't worry about that for now. It's kind of a Java thing and we'll get into it later. For the most part, I don't want to explain what it's doing. Basically it's just creating a new thread. Think of it like that. So just say a new thread with parentheses and then we're going to hit an open bracket and hit enter. And before our code gets too sloppy because we're going to have a lot of different brackets and a lot of different uh, somewhat methods within this thread, we're going to finish off our thread uh, definition for the most part with a semicolon just so we don't forget later. Now what a thread is looking for is a method called run. So we need to set up this run method within our thread that we defined. So we're going to say public, again public is accessible to everyone for the most part, public void, meaning it's a method, and run with parentheses, and then we're going to set up a new pair of brackets. As you can see, the brackets are already getting kind of confusing, so I'm going to try and keep them all on the screen so you guys can make sure you're doing this right. Now basically within our run method, we want, anytime we do something sketchy, like if you guys ever wanted to go streaking across a football game and you know you thought that'd be awesome so you're gonna try to do it but you know sometimes it wouldn't work because you get arrested anytime you do something sketchy in programming you also have to use a try bracket so we're gonna try to let our program do something for the most part and that's what this is gonna do and if it can't do that we're gonna catch the exceptions or basically if we can't do the action that we're trying to to perform most likely there's some sort of error or an exception so we're gonna try and catch those exceptions and use them for debugging so we're gonna say catch exceptions and basically to catch exceptions you tell the computer what kind of exceptions you are looking to catch and for this instance we're gonna say intercept or I'm sorry interrupted error I'm sorry, interrupted exception, what am I doing? That's the type of exception we're going to try to catch, and it's called E. Now, within this, uh, basically, this catch, again, is trying to catch these type of exceptions if they pop up. You guys don't really know, need to know what, what this exception is for the most part right now. Um, this is mainly for debugging. So, again, put a new bracket right here, and we have to import interrupted exceptions or actually it's giving us an error because uh, we aren't trying to do anything so there's no way there's going to be any any exceptions but that will go away in the next tutorial and uh, there's where we're going to try and catch those exceptions and the last thing we can do is do a finally method so there we go within our run class we have a try we're going to try to do some methods or try to do something if we can't do those methods or something runs if our applications running too slow for some reason it's going to catch the exceptions and we can use that for debugging like write a note to ourselves within here so we know which thread is going slow or not working properly and then finally we can do this method after we've done that after we've tried something we can do something finally and <laughs> yeah i don't know it's pretty Okay, basically, basically, yeah, this is our last little chunk of code that we can use if we want to try one last method after we've done whatever we tried in the, these brackets. So hopefully that's not too confusing. We're going to set up what we want this thread to do in the next tutorial. 
but after we set up our thread it's still not going to do anything so what we're going to do is we're going to use our thread variable called timer and to start a thread you just use the method called thread and this or I'm sorry called start and this is from the thread class so we can use this method because again it's a thread variable so we're just going to hit start and then semicolon and that will start our thread again we haven't defined it to do anything I just wanted to show you the framework of how you set up a thread and some of these try catch and finally uh, type of things so thanks again for watching guys I'll catch you in the next tutorial sorry I'm getting kinda tired so I wasn't super enthusiastic I apologize so have a good day